We're going to begin this painting with a very watery mix of uh, purple. I mix alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue. And we're going to basically look at like one third, a little bit above the middle. It's not really one third, but it's above the middle. We're going to make a, a very small line and go on more or less a fourth of the canvas here and a third here. And we're going to just make a diagonal line like that. Then we're going to make another diagonal that goes here <clears throat> before the middle of the canvas. And all of this is going to be in a, in a dark, washy sort of uh, stain. It's, it should be very transparent at this point because if we need to correct the painting, we should be able to do it with water or just painting on top. All of this area here, if you can see, it's sort of the uh, third. We're gonna paint all of this dark. And this purplish color with alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue can have a little bit more of the red. As you see, I had it too blue perhaps. So we're gonna make all of this in a dark wash color it's very transparent and we're gonna just use this sort of third it's about a third of the canvas on the bottom we're gonna do something similar maybe with a fourth of the canvas you can use third fourth uh, but it's also going to be all of this is gonna be dark and it doesn't have to be a straight line actually it might be better if this is not a straight line uh, and as you can see, it's just filling up very transparent wash. Don't go too, too dark. Okay, so now we're gonna bring this down. Uh, this is gonna be reflection. This is a bridge and the bridge has this shape. And then we're gonna have a line. So this is the, we're gonna make this a bit softer because this is gonna be at the back of the painting, these are gonna be buildings in the back, so we have to realize this line, just continue here because through the bridge, we're gonna see some of these buildings also. And this bridge is gonna be having a the, the bridge walk, but there's a little bit of a perspective, so this is not a completely straight line. It goes slightly down. It will all make sense. Under this area, it's gonna be dark, but you can see I'm putting a diagonal there, and this is also gonna have sort of a diagonal dark here. So those two diagonals should be pretty much parallel. And under this walk, walking bridge is gonna be a dark area also. This dark area we bring down and it actually comes down with some sort of a, this is gonna be a reflection on water. So it's gonna be wavy over there, but in the beginning, it's these dark areas established. In here, we're also gonna have some uh, wavy reflections in the water. I hope you're with me so far. You've got this, uh, this is gonna also be uh, some of this is going to be wiggly and then we're going to establish some lighter dark area here Not as dark as the bridge, but uh, this is going to be also Dark perhaps I'm having my soupy mix with a little bit more ultramarine So I just added a little bit more of the alizarin crimson here so this is the way that we start establishing the transparent dark colors so far. Ultramarine blue, you can actually see this is gonna be a, a line of, of trees. Uh, this is gonna be uh, some grass and there's gonna be more trees here in the shade. That's the way that we start easy in the painting. We are about five minutes into it and you should pretty much have the idea of a bank where I'm actually standing in this bank to take the photo. We see the bridge, um, you know, the inclination of the bridge can be less pronounced or as pronounced as this. Um, it will work fine. And then you have the under bridge, the underside of the bridge in the shade, uh, the, the, the side of this column in the shade. 
and then these are going to be reflections on the river. For the next step, we're going to start introducing a bit of the alizarin crimson to that same purplish uh, soupy mix we had. We add just the, uh, the color without more water, so we get a very nice green. I hope you can see it. I am painting with natural light, so I hope you can actually see it's sort of a, a dark green color where we are starting to establish some of this dark green area in the front. And with it's only adding the, uh, the uh, Indian yellow, which is a transparent yellow. And that I'm going to use a bit more of the transparent yellow into the soupy mix. And you can just see we're establishing some of the green uh, areas here. Uh, I like to have in some cases, or in many, many cases, the purple underneath showing. It just gives sort of luminescence. Uh, I like that to show a little bit of the under, it's called the underpainting. A little bit more of the laser and crimson to that mix. I haven't added uh, more of the purple because I want to make it uh, in some areas more of the green, green colors that we're going to have here. So now we are going to add, make it a little darker with a laser and crimson and ultramarine blue. Uh, the more ultramarine blue, the more greenish it looks. But remember that when we have grasses, there's also dirt and dirt is kind of brown. So it's not a bad idea to add at this point uh, also a laser and crimson. As you see, I am just painting another layer in this top and I'm going to start very, very dark to bring the lights later on in this painting. So it's more of the alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue, but it still has a bit of the Indian yellow. This area, because there's, there's a couple of trees there, you have, you can see probably, I hope you can see, alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue. Sometimes I don't mix completely. And this is gonna be sort of the darkest area of the painting and this is going to be a tree that was actually providing me with a shade when I was uh, doing this um, painting. Um, I wanted to do this yeah, as a plein air but I took some notes in terms of sketching. Anyway, um, we continue doing this. This is going to be also dark. This whole area, the darker we make it from the beginning, the better. And as you can see, painting in layers allows me to make these transparent washes a bit more, less transparent and a, a little bit darker. And there's gonna be these trees on the top. It will all make sense pretty soon. The closer we are also, the darker we're gonna have because we're gonna have more contrast and that we're going to see pretty soon. The contrast of the dark, our eyes are driven to contrast, either contrasting color schemes. This means having the, it's, it's called complementary colors. That drives our view. So having orange and blue uh, side by side or red and green side by side or violet and yellow. Those are combinations that draw our attention. And also the uh, very striking contrast in, in sense of bright and dark. They also attach, uh, attract our attention. So this particular tree here, I'm just making, if you can see it's, I'm not drawing, I am just uh, making shapes. And color wise, you can really to experiment with colors. It won't look bad. Even if you painted a red tree, I'm sure it's gonna make sense. It's your painting. So once we have more or less established the darks, I this is the first time that I'm going to be cleaning and it's a big brush. I like to use big brushes uh, because that allows me to keep myself from trying to paint details. So I'm going to clean my brush 
just keep a paper towel or it could be an old rag if you want to use an old rag you're not wasting that much paint at first I did not like doing this but truly that's not that much paint and it's worth it after you sort of wiped the excess paint I'm going to dunk it in water that's what I am doing off camera I don't want to touch my setting to it takes a bit of time to set this up in my kitchen um, and then once you basically dunked it in clean water then you take the excess away it's not completely clean at the end of the session <clears throat> I clean my brushes with soap and water <clears throat> but during the painting make sure that you don't get that acrylic paint dry on your brushes because it ruined the brushes reason why i wanted to clean this a lot is because i am going to start introducing white white in my palette is one of the opaque colors that i use and so far i have used ultramarine blue alizarin crimson and <coughs> sorry indian yellow which is a beautiful golden color but it's transparent so to make things bright and shiny uh, with the Indian yellow you add the opaque white and it really pops that so I am going to start popping this now because I need to establish this is an area where it's going to be receiving light and I now I think it's going to benefit a bit from a little bit of a lizard and crimson I mean a little bit you see what I mean a really a little tiny bit of alizarin crimson um, to make it a bit a bit more sort of earth color so under here what I recommend you to do is the width of your structures when you have any structural elements like we're trying to do now the width of them just use your brush because that makes things easier for us to paint so it's just like a, an area here, and this will make sense pretty soon. And then another area of bright color here. And that's basically it for the lights under this bridge. Uh, for the back, the farther back we are, it's going to be more bluish. So we are going to start introducing a little bit of that ultramarine blue to the mix that I had with that tiny 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 bit of a and crimson and it gives like a turquoise a green and I'm going to use that just just a little bit of you know brushing here and there those are gonna be uh, bushes in in this area in the back and and then I am going to be changing from this green I am going to be using a bit more of the blue and the pink. So because, well, since I have, I'm sorry, since I have this green, I'm just gonna pop it in some areas here. And you can see how, um, it's just a few areas are, are receiving light and this will make sense. I hope it is making some sense. So because I did have this paint, uh, sometimes you just take a look at your image and say, where else am I seeing some of these uh, green, you know, sort of lighter green that I can use. That's just not to, you know, completely wash out something that it's useful to have in, in the painting because it creates harmony. You can see I used exactly the same color, but it looks different here than here than here. And that's because colors are influenced by, by what they have around them. And in this case, of course, uh, each one of these strokes of the same green is by the side of different colors. And those colors influence the way that we see them. All right, so there's gonna be just a slight area if, if you look at your image, you can actually see just areas where there's gonna be light colors and areas where there's gonna be darker colors. Using the same brush, we again take away the excess paint and 
Now I have two buckets of water. One of them I use for when the brush has darker colors in it and the other one for lighter colors. And as you can see, the lighter colors um, probably wash slightly easier. So now I have a clean brush, same brush as I've been using, have the clean brush, and I am going to make a light, first I'm gonna start with a light blue and this light blue is not going to be the lightest light in the painting. The lightest light is always the sky. And that's gonna be truly almost all white. But this kind of blue color is gonna help me with establishing some of these lines. Even though I made them purple before, um, I think they were a bit too dark. And these are gonna be buildings, buildings in the back. And then I'm going to cut through this tree because the tree, it's like a, had different sort of trunks in there. So let's hope that I can make sense of this. So where the bridge ends, there's the hint of the city behind. And same in here, we have this area. Now I'm going to introduce a little bit of the Alizer and crimson again to make this like a like a very light uh, purple color in addition to the blue, so that not all the buildings are going to have the same color. You can see it's a it's a gray color when when you add that little bit of the alizarin and crimson, but it's still very light because those buildings in the back I don't want to define them very clearly. I just want to make sure that it, it does look like there's a city behind this area with perhaps some greenery in there. All right, so now what, um, what I'm going to do here is just a little bit so for consistency and harmony in these buildings. The reflections of the water are always darker, so I have still my darker pile. And with that darker pile ready, it's just bringing it down it actually looks more brownish, but that's okay, we'll, we'll fix that. Okay, so now I think it's time to start working on another area which is sort of dark, but not as dark. So it's good that I have still a little bit of that, I just realized that brushes is dirty on the ferro, and it bothers me, <laughs> sorry. And my fingers are dirty, anyway. Um, wear clothes that you can discard or just keep for painting because um, acrylics stain your clothes and it's really not, you cannot get it out. Oh, okay, so this area of the bridge is gonna be like in the dark and I sort of liked uh, what I had here. So because I have that mix, which was the, mi the darker mix I used with the three colors, alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, and uh, the um, Indian yellow, just add a, a little bit, not too much, a little bit of white and, and you actually get a very dull gray. And that very dull gray we're gonna be using here. And you know, the proportions, I think it's actually a bit too dark. So in order to make it a little lighter, I'm gonna use the mix of the Indian yellow with white instead of using just white. Uh, I don't want to make it too um, cold. Uh, white and blue uh, are cooler colors and yellow and red are warmer colors. And I just want to make sure that this wall in particular should be dark because the light is coming from behind, but it shouldn't be really that dark as this area here. Now what I want to do with that wall is really not that much, but I want to make it a bit more grayer. So I am adding to that mix a little bit more of the blue and the red. If I add only blue, it looks very uh, green. If I add a little bit of the red, it just makes it, um, I think it's, it's a nicer color and again, I, we may be establishing this a bit darker, but um, acrylics dry dark. 
And this in my, um, I think for my painting, I don't want this to be uh, a very sharp line. I want it to be like blur, like if the photograph is just focused on something else. So that's why I did that. If you can see, I had the sharp line and then I just used the edge of that brush to make it a bit less sharp. We will have a sharp line here, that is for sure. And the darker area in, in this is under the bridge where, where you actually get really no light. So that's going to be, and if you can see, it's red and blue and not necessarily all mixed. This bridge has kind of a nice point and then all of this area under the bridge should be dark. So we will be establishing this dark uh, several times. It's not just once because um, in acrylic as well as in oils, you benefit from painting in layers. Especially if I use very transparent paints like I am doing. Okay, I think that for now, I mean, there's a piece of this bridge that continues to come this way as we have painted it and it just goes into the water around here so this all is bridge and there's a perspective here so what did you see that i'm doing is making it darker in the bottom and as you also as you go it's a, it's a very sharp perspective. So as you go in the back, it should be lighter. So we're gonna make that a bit lighter. And in this area of the bridge, it's in the shade. So on top of what I painted, now I'm adding the uh, bluish mix I had. As you can see, I haven't changed color. I'm just working on it, on this particular shade. Now with a very um, the same the same brush I haven't cleaned it I'm gonna use the same sort of dark I need to establish just a tiny dark line so uh, ultramarine blue alizarin crimson on top of what I had so it's not really a very clean brush make sure that the edge is chiseled because we are going to establish here a line that's going to be. A shadow and you know it's not actually looking very nice but we can fix it we can fix everything all right and then we are going to make this underneath also very dark so again uh, I should have probably cleaned the brush instead of continuing using the same brush but um, Let's try. So this is gonna be a dark area and it's very blue. So I just added a bit more of the, the red. So it's, I want it to be more of a violet dark because this is completely blocked from light. It's under the bridge and the bridge has passageway. This is for pedestrians to go through. And this is sort of a column with a terrace. That's, that's how I interpret what's happening. Okay, and the water level is here. So all of this is gonna be reflection. All right, so for, for reflections, you can wiggle, it works fine, and you can bring it down. But you know, wiggles or just lines sometimes are the best way to, to make sure that it does look like there's that's the water and it wiggles and sort of goes into the other reflection. And this is the Charles River in, in Boston, Massachusetts. Okay. Down and wiggle. Down and wiggle. This is our level. Okay. And this bridge is a little bit more straight, not as bent as I had it. So let's see if the brush uh, works with me. Sometimes the brushes just open up. Okay, yeah. 
this is under under that light area okay so far uh, you should be having something similar and your brush strokes brush strokes are sort of a signature so it's the way that you paint is like the way you talk or the way you write it's your own style um, but usually we try to follow brush strokes as best as can help us describe the shape of what we are painting so provided that you are using your own language uh, you can actually just follow in some of these areas instead of the way that I had it for a final view it's just describing that particular area under the bridge okay all right okay let's focus a little bit on this area and I think we are almost at the time I want to fill this with color before we start with the sky and with the area of the water uh, but since I have this dark here let's just uh, establish like I mentioned these were several tree trunks here uh, they're like a bunch of trees together and you can you know you can barely see where they end but it's always good to anchor trees and vegetation in the in the bottom these are also trees these are like two tree, tree trunks that are going to be there together okay so now we're going to work a bit on not very well defined i actually like the way that end looks and i think I'm going to be using that a little bit on this area. So I have this dirty color already on my brush. So add a little bit of the white that I had that is not clean white. It was already a mixture of the white to get like a gray color. I don't want to have too much definition here. And I don't think I like that green in there actually. So, you know, we can, we can call the gardener and chop off chop everything you don't want you call the engineer you call the gardener you call anybody who you want okay um so with no much definition in there now what's going to be important i'm going to add a little bit more of the white and perhaps a little bit of the yellow uh in this sort of gray muddy muddy gray color to make it a little, little lighter. And I don't like to hold the brushes the way that I'm showing you, but um, sort of the camera is in between myself and the painting, and I need to do it sort of um, in an inclination. So I cannot be right in front of my painting. And so that's why I am holding this to make, you know, smaller, touches here to make these touches a bit more precise I am holding it really close now if you can be more comfortable I recommend you to avoid the urge to grab a smaller brush um, I think overall paintings look better when you have less definition so I'm just going to be breaking this this is supposed to be like a fence and just by doing you know vertical strokes in here um, I am going to try to make this railing look uh, less defined uh, less defined I'm definitely achieving less definition that's okay um, but yeah I think this was at first it's it's good to establish that light area but uh, to have a better understanding of what it is, I think I needed to blur that. So you can see there's no specific shapes, but I hope you realize it already looks like the far away uh, image of the, uh, of the city. All right, so what we are going to work on now a bit more I want to do this before we go on is this 
area here of the bridge and the final step is going to be just the lights and th of course we haven't painted the sky and we haven't painted the water all right so what we are going to do now is i'm not going to clean the brush this is daring but i'm not going to clean it because i want to have a bit more consistency and i don't want this as bright yellow so i am adding a bit more of the alizarin and crimson to the mix that I had that was the green I'm sorry the yellow Indian yellow with white and what I get what I want to get is like an earth color it's not salmon it's more like brownish color and I want to start using it here this is a stone bridge and although we're not really defining very clearly these areas, uh, I do want to make sure, and this is the level of the water, remember this line here. So I just want to make sure that there's some idea of a structure there that would make sense. I am dipping the paint brush now in the lighter area that I still kept with the uh, yellow and white so it's not completely yellow and white because it's not the clean brush but I just want to start you know making some areas with where the light shines and this actually looks a bit greenish which is fine and under the shadow of that ledge we should have light so I am going to go over this several times and on the reflections of the water we are going to paint it uh, a little darker than the bridge. It's still a bit dark so I am wiping this and dunk it in the dark water bucket that I have. I have two, you can have many. Um, the more you have, some people use big, uh, one big one. I like to have several smaller ones. I use small yogurt containers. You can use anything you, because these acrylics are actually non-toxic. So you can use even, you know, anything you use for uh, your china. Um, I, I just use those plastic um, yogurt containers. The more you have, the better, because that way whenever you're cleaning, you have cleaner brushes. I found that having two, one for light and one for dark, uh, works well, but you know, you can never say there's too many. I'm trying to make this brighter. And one trick that I may end up using, because I can see I cannot get as bright as I want it. And I'm exaggerating from the photo that I saw. One trick I'm gonna do that I have uh, is, it's in the description, uh, it's to use cadmium yellow. And I think I am gonna go for it. This had like a ledge, and then the back goes there. Yeah, I think this is going to give a good impression of more or less. I mean, I, I, like I said, I don't wanna have too much definition. I just wanna, give the impression that we are seeing through under the bridge. So the cadmium yellow is a color that really gives a punch. It's like I say sometimes, it's a color that shouts. And I want this particular area to shout, but if I put just white, white makes things cooler whereas yellow makes things more you know warmer so i want to give the impression of the sunlight and let's see if this is gonna work uh, so you can see how the yellow it's really much more punchy and light and this is exactly what i was looking for i don't want to make all of this because i want to give the impression that we have a structure there with stone now the top area should be uh, very bright 
and I'm gonna just do like dot, dot, dot to give the impression that there's like a structure. And in here, I'm going to try with this big brush to sort of also chiseled edge uh, here, chiseled edge. And I am going to give the impression that we do have some light also on this railing. And you know, people actually uh, bicycle there, they, they walk there under this um, bridge. And then it goes in the back. Okay, so with that really is not that much detail, but it does provide some sort of an idea of what we have. You can see how this is thicker. We started very light, transparent, and as I'm going more in detail into the opaque colors, I am making this thicker. So we need to have a reflection here in the bottom that's going to be a bit darker so i'm dunking it into the yellow indian yellow and keeping a little bit of that color and i'm just uh the color i'm sorry is the um cadmium yellow and so it's just a little bit in here of that bright and maybe it needs a little bit of a tiny touch of white Maybe I should wait and continue doing the painting before I do that. But anyway, okay, we can always cover. All right, so now that we have more or less that area of the bridge, I can see that I missed something, so we're going to paint it now. It's also getting a light color, and it's sort of like a wall that's behind um, this ledge and it, it goes like behind the arch, this particular ledge. And it is getting a very bright, so I'm gonna use the pile with the cadmium yellow and white. It does have, my pile has a little bit of the Indian yellow, but the cadmium prevails because it's actually on this corner that it's getting more light. It almost looks white, but I swear it had those two colors. And again, the size of this column, or it's like a wall, I think, uh, it's, it's better if you do it according to what your brush is telling you. Don't fight your brush. That's the color I actually wanted for this area. So I'm gonna brush down a bit and once it dries i am going to establish that same lighter color i think i didn't want to use that much white as i told you i wanted it to look um more sunny bright but it does need that brighter lighter color in there i can just let it dry a bit and then we can establish those colors and for the water reflections we go up and down oh i think that looks much better at, at least according to what i'm seeing in my reference photo and it's going to be sort of the focal point it is interesting because i actually have placed it right in the middle of the canvas and everybody says don't do that but i think it did work well for this particular painting let's get started with the um now the sky and the water for the sky and the water i am going to clean the brush and try to get as much of that paint out the sky it's a blue ultramarine blue and white i'm not going to bother with clouds because there's there's the sky is going to peek through some of these trees but i don't want to complicate the scene anymore it's better to simplify in the water we're going to introduce a little bit more of a greener color which is viridian green if you don't have viridian green you can use thalo cyanin green or thalo green and thalo cyanin blue either of them will work in combination with the ultramarine blue i see a bit of the yellow there so i need to wash this better with my water and make sure that I get rid of that yellow there. 
it won't really matter too much because I'm going to do the sky right now with a lot of white and well, let's start with a tiny bit of blue. It, I don't know how bright and how potent your uh, titanium white is, so the proportions are going to change, but I basically want a very light blue. The sky is the lightest area in your painting. So I'm going to start painting this sky in here and I need to make sure that I can go up, establish the shape of this arch in here and in here. I painted, some people actually explain, paint the shapes larger than you need them and then you chisel them with the other paint. paint. And that's what I just did. So in here, I'm just going to you know, go into those shapes and start trying to make uh, them sort of look like a cityscape, like buildings. Okay, this is a delicate uh, area, so if you want to use a smaller brush, go ahead. I don't want to use a smaller brush. And that's, that's it for the area of the sky under the bridge. Now we're going to start doing uh, some area of sky here. And normally as you go up, the sky is a bit darker. So I'm just adding a tiny, tiny bit more of the blue. You can almost see uh, the difference between the, the darker blue and the lighter blue. Not much difference. Now, if you are using a set of acrylics where you have many colors available, you don't need to do the mixes. I'm just uh, going to show you how you can do it with just a few. And we're going to start sort of creating the shape of these leaves and the tree by painting the, the sky that you can see through the leaves. So it's what we call negative painting, or some people also refer to this as painting the sky holes. Uh, in this case, of course, it's holes in between the leaves of the trees, and these holes allow us to see the sky, so that why people call it the sky holes. And don't worry, we will go back and reestablish that line of the bridge. As I mentioned to you, I didn't want that line to be very notable. So there are some areas here where we can see more of the sky and there's a lot of the leaves coming from the different, they were tiny trees. I think this was taken during the summertime, this, this photo. I think it was summertime and I did a larger painting of this particular view. Um, so I, I think that's why we had these uh, trees. They had uh, a few of these leaves. So important, the sky color needs to be lighter than the buildings in the back, okay? And as you go down, it is lighter and it becomes a bit more yellow. We don't have that much sky, so I don't need to make that particular change, but I did make it lighter and with a bit of the yellow because we did have the yellow mix. I used it. So even if you have a tiny painting like this, it is convenient that you remember that to separate from the back, it's actually good to have the lighter sky at the end. Uh, I mean, at the bottom in the horizon. So in between the leaves, it depends where the leaves are. Uh, it's bluer and it is actually a little darker, but where the, where the horizon is, it should be a bit lighter, okay? Now we are going to be painting between these because these actually are different tree trunks. And so we can see the sky and uh, I am just going around 
these areas that we painted that look like the back end and here we are just going to make sure that we have openings these were not very bushy trees so we have a lot of openings and I'm just getting into the blue that I had created and painting basically with the tip as you can see I like to hold the brush a bit far away or you know that's why I like the long handle brushes so here we're just making sure that it does read when you have a tree trunk don't cut it on unless the tree trunk is already smaller right so in this case we have one that's small here and one that's small here uh, but then this other one was coming up and up so you cannot see through a trunk you cannot see the leaves so just be careful how you do this um, sky holes because they you need to keep in mind and that's what was more difficult for me although it's fun to paint it once you get uh, to start doing it it's fun to paint these sky holes but when you start it's difficult because you are painting what's called the negative shape so you need to keep in mind that you are painting the tree trunks through painting the sky and you're painting the leaves through painting the sky so it's and, and this is really I mean I'm not copying I'm just adding them is just making sure that I do see some of these uh, you know the, the the sky these were like I said they were not very very large bushy trees they had a lot of uh, holes in there so just make sure that you are sort of doing your own treetop I think this is starting to look better as a tree and uh, as you can see is just adding some of these areas and just making sure that we've got um, leaves you know it, does it look like leaves I think it does I think it is starting to look better and here what I'm going to do is chisel again chisel my brush and I am going to make sure that I got this tree trunk here and these leaves yeah this this was really a very very tiny sort of a skinny skinny three um, three or four trunks but skinny at the top okay we're going to be making some lights in there for the tree and the other thing that I want to do now that I have this blue is we are going to add a little bit more of the yellow that we had with that sort of blue and as I mentioned to you we have the color called viridian green it's a tiny amount of viridian green that I've added to this mix and let's hope it looks okay it's going to be for the far end of I think it's a bit too yellow so a tiny bit of the ultramarine blue it's going to make it look better more like a turquoise color and that's yeah I think even it's still a bit and you can see I'm just uh, brushing it over very very lightly brushing it and then here I am going to start defining it there's more white and more blue as we come to the bottom so it is darker in the bottom lighter in the horizon opposite to the sky the sky it is lighter in the in so close to the horizon both of them should be lighter that's that's the bottom line this this we said it's the back of the 
happening is reflection. So as we start having reflections, uh, we are painting more of the wiggles. Now this is going to establish the back or the area of the tree trunk. So we're painting again a negative painting. I could go vertical, but I sort of like, it's my brush strokes. I like to paint when I'm painting the water uh, horizontal. When I paint the reflections on the water, it's vertical. But when I paint the, the water, sort of uh, wavy water, it's horizontal. We are going to go a little bit more uh, over this area and this is what's called a dry brush painting. So just slightly, very, very light on top and it gives the impression of the running water. Well, I think so. <laughs> At least that's what people, uh, that's how I learned and, and I like it. Uh, you can make it your own style. Now, I think I'm going to make it a little bit more blue. I have a feeling that's probably too turquoise for that area. So I am just a smidge more blue. And it's okay because water actually has different, different colors of reflections. And so you, you can see how I come in here and it just feels very, very light touch. Um, I'm not doing, you know, tremendously dark and we did decide this is the, the water level. So this is all reflection and this is reflection. Okay. So in, in the reflections, we go horizontal. I'm sorry, the reflections, we go vertical and the, uh, water wavy lines are horizontal. Okay. All right, um, and there was a very sharp uh, difference in the very light here in the water. Not as light as the sky, but as, a, as I am doing it, uh, it was light in the water and very sharp, dark area here. I almost don't want to say with the painting what is reflection and what is the bridge. If you want to, you can make some waves in here. You could like I did here, defining more or less that this is this is water. But it's up to you. It's your it's your painting. I like to have sometimes areas where the viewer is gonna try to interpret and say, what is that? I, I I'm interested. Instead of just seeing everything very clear, okay, they just pass by and they just go past your painting and don't pay more much more attention. I think that when you make the viewer think go close and think about what they're seeing. It just makes the painting a bit more interesting in my mind. So what I'm doing now is painting the grass uh, with water. So paint the grass with the watercolor. Uh, the, the color of the water is just uh, vertical strokes. You can do, you know, downwards or upwards. Uh, I think downwards would probably work better because you just do like this, see? Not that difficult. And uh, it does start creating that area of the grass. We'll do the same here. Make the area of the grass. And the grass can go in different, um, higher, lower, in different areas. All right, so now we're gonna make this other piece of the water. And I had this trunk that was kind of truncated. Um, so if if it doesn't work for you, just get rid of it. Like I said, call, call the landscaper and change it. I, I sort of like to have that piece that of the tree that is not necessarily going all the way up. And what I did is I just created a little bit of a lighter color because that way you start placing the waves on top. One important thing is that by the side of that darker trunk, you need to have a sharp definition of the water behind. This is what we call sharp edges. Contrary to what I did in here, which are very soft edges, 
this should be sharper. Now, remember that we do have uh, this area of the tree and it should be seeing through. I don't know how many tree trunks I've made now, but fortunately with um, trees and landscapes is not the same as with structures like architectural structures where you have to make sure that uh, this the lines are straight. In here you can do the lines the way you want it. And you could just keep it as one tree trunk if it's easier for you. I can see that here, uh, this is farthest for me and I'm twisting my arm and my hand as I paint, but that one needed to be a bit more defined. I ate through that particular trunk, so we can fix that. And I can see that here, some of these areas will benefit from having a little bit more of a layer of color because there's, there, you can still see a little bit through. Now, sometimes with this see-through, I like it because it does give the impression that the light is coming through, but in other areas, we don't want that. So let's continue the water here. And as you see, um, I have three piles. One has more, it, they're side by side. One has more yellow, one has more um, white, and one has more blue. And all of them have a little bit of the viridian green that I used. And you just go into the different piles because it's good to have the different colors. And actually I may establish a little bit of a darker color in the, for the water. It wasn't really that dark in the back. So I am gonna go and take uh, this daring step of going on top and just sort of brushing through. I think it really did not look that dark. We couldn't see the reflections of those areas in the back. So I just made that up and it doesn't work, which is good that you actually see how I can fix things that I don't think are working. And this is your painting. If you want to have the image of what you're seeing, just take a picture, don't paint it. But if you want to make a painting, it is your painting. So by this making it yours, you just decide what is working for the painting and what is not working. So, um, I now have established that it should be lighter. So I am going to go for adding a lot of white in my mix. Um, in the back, it's always lighter. I mean, near the horizon. I think that's the best way to describe it because it works for both the sky and the water. And I just made my life very difficult by making the shape of these trees this way. But I think it's going to make a nice uh, image, a nice visual image to have this tree with all of these tiny little tree trunks in here. Now we have some areas of the bright uh, color shining, but then as I mentioned, I wanted to make some darker area, which is going to be with a little bit of blue and a tiny bit of that viridian green. It's not really very dark, but it's going to be looking darker according, you know, compared to what I had here. And that's what I'm going to be using for the area closer to us. And it's just for this area of the water that's closer to us and cre create some, some wavy lines in there. This is a river and, you know, rivers actually do have more, you know, have some currents and I mean lakes are very quiet areas but rivers are a bit more um, motion filled so you need to do that and here I just realized that I had not completed that side of that tree trunk okay so uh, with I think with that it's enough 
for this particular area of the painting and yes I think here it was probably too white because this is getting a bit of a shade so I am going to darken that area of the water just a little bit with the purple that we had before um, I don't know if it was a good idea I think it is actually better to use more of the blue um, not cleaning too much more of the blue with the white because I think yeah th this area was a bit darker um, not only we have the reflection but we also should have some sort of a shaded area from from the bridge because the, the light is coming from the back so we are going to use uh, this darker area i know that i'm already past the hour and we should not have too much more to go just a few little details on bright areas but um, i think i I thought this was gonna be faster, but I guess that I always get a bit carried over with uh, painting details. And it should have this darker, nice, this is a nice blue color. It's not really too much like on your face through ultramarine, very dark, but it's, it's darker than I had it before. And I think it's gonna work much better for the final painting impression and same here because this is supposed to be a bit more shaded okay so let's let's wrap this up soon i don't want to take too much more of uh, your time and because i know that people get uh, to see only shorter videos you can always uh, watch my other videos in my channel and you i think i speak uh slow enough that you can watch them if you want to in higher speed if you don't want to see everything in detail as i am showing you if you want to paint along or, or use this for your own painting you might want to use it in in real in real speed or more of the real time they say real time speed okay so um, what we are going to establish now with the same blue i have the um, cadmium yellow that makes a very very bright green so we're going to be ready to add some bright green color here on some of these areas that had a lot of light in in this particular image and we had some of these also were catching the light. So it's the cadmium yellow with the water, the color that I used for the water, that's what I am using here. And some of these was actually coming through here. So there's, there's a bit of light, uh, light color by the side. That's why I knew that I did not want to do a lot of details on this particular bridge because I was going to have some of these leaves come in here with that bright and I'm just adding a bit more yellow in some areas it was yellower than in others I may use a little bit of the whiter color that I had before uh, just to make it less transparent and this is popping or making this pop a bit more on where the light is coming from uh, in some of these areas and of course we did have some light areas here as I had mentioned to you we established them but look at how uh, lighter they look as we move on in the painting and we really add some areas of popping lights in here um, I don't you know, they, it's like scattered. I don't want to do them everywhere because then it would lose the impression of, of light. But in this particular tree here, I do want to make sure that it looks like we did get some lights coming from behind. Light was coming from here. And so I want to make sure that we get these lighter 
areas in here. And what I need now is a bit of the alizarin crimson, just, just a bit of the alizarin crimson with that same light color and it's sort of a brownish because this needs a bit of light on this end. I think it's actually too dark. So I am adding white, just simple white. And in these areas of, of the tree trunk, some of these areas of the tree trunk were catching light on this end. And I think that gives a better impression of what we are seeing by painting just just a few of these areas of the tree trunk were catching the light. And in here, I had a tree trunk that was catching some light, but it was like um, dappled. Yeah, that's how it's called, like dappled lights on, on this area of the, of the tree. Not too many, but just, just a few are giving us the impression that there's actually a tree trunk in there. And this one here was also getting some dappled lights and was coming down here too. So this is basically um, it, I believe uh, we've uh, achieved in a little bit more than an hour, a nice uh, challenging painting that's quite complex. And I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed it. If I end up doing a bit more on this painting, it depends how it sits because acrylic paints dry uh, darker. So it depends how I see them at the end. I might work a bit more on this particular painting. If I do so, I will make another video so you can follow me on another video for final touches. But this might actually be all. Uh, I might leave it this way. It's not, um, it's not a painting that's um, a final sort of super defined painting. As you can see, some of the original areas are showing through, but I think it may work fine. Again, check my video channel and I hope you liked it. And if you did, just um, check my channel and subscribe. I try to put videos frequently, often, so that there's always something interesting for you to see, to do. It's uh, educational based, completely free. As you saw, I used cadmium yellow to bring up some of those lights in there. And that's it for today. Have a very good day, enjoy and paint. It's a great way of doing a creative um, and nice activity. Thank you very much.